right, everybody, let's take a look at our lesson one for vocabulary. So for vocabulary, we'll always have a root word and a prefix or an affix, or a prefix or a suffix. So this week, our root word is graph, meaning to write. And our words are autograph, like the signature of someone who's famous. Graffiti, it's like pictures or words painted or drawn on a wall or on a building. Graphite, that shiny black stuff that's in your pencils. Paragraph, part of a piece of writing that deals with one subject, starts in a new line, and is made up of one or more sentences. And a telegraph. So telegraphs were an outdated system, or are an outdated system, um, of how we used to send messages over a long distance using wires and electrical signals. This is kind of what we used before we had the internet for texting or for making phone calls. Next, we have our prefixes. We have two prefixes this week. We have ear and non, both kind of meaning not or the opposite of. So we have irrational, not thinking clearly or not able to use reason. Irregular, not normal or not usual, doesn't follow the usual rules or not regular in form or in shape. Irrelevant, something that's not important or doesn't relate to what's being discussed right now. Non-existent, meaning it's not present or real or doesn't exist. And nonverbal, something that doesn't involve words or someone who isn't able to speak. So let's take a look at our guided practice for today. So we're going to start with part A, understand words. So as we go through these, make sure that you write them down. Um, and we may skip some parts. Anything that we skip, I'll just write skip next to it. You're welcome to give it a try on your own, but you do not have to. So number one, not thinking clearly, not able to use reason or good judgment. That would be irrational. Number two, an outdated system of sending messages over long distances by using wires and electrical signals. That's a telegraph. Number three, not normal or usual, not following the usual rules about what should be done, not regular in form or shape. That's kind of our hint right there, not regular. Number four, not present or real, not existing. Non-existent. Number five, not involving words, not able to speak. Non-verbal. Number six, the signature of a famous person. An autograph. Number seven, part of a piece of writing that deals with one subject, begins in a new line, and is made up of more than one sentence. It's a paragraph. Number eight, not important or relating to what is being discussed right now. Irrelevant. Number nine, pictures or words painted or drawn on a wall, a building, etc. called graffiti. And number 10, a shiny black substance that's used in pencils. That is called graphite. And we are going to skip part B. So you can just write skip next to it. If you want to do it on your own, you're more than welcome to. Writing the definitions in your own words may help you to remember the definitions of the words a little bit better. So if you want to do it, go for it. If you need more time to write these down, this would be a great place to pause the video. Now we're looking at activity four. We're going to skip over part A, but again, you're welcome to do it if you'd like. 
and we're going to go to part B, analogies. So we read an analogy like this. Ordinary is to signature as extraordinary is to blank. So the way that I think about it is an ordinary would be a signature, but the extraordinary version would be an autograph. Number seven, letter is to word, a sentence is to blank. Letter is to word, a sentence is to paragraph. A letter is a part of a word, and a sentence is a part of a paragraph. Number eight, irrelevant is to relevant, as blank is to non-existent. So irrelevant is the opposite of relevant, and non-existent is the opposite of existent. Number nine, milk is to white as blank is to black. Milk is white and graphite is black. And number 10, quiet is to loud as blank is to vocal. The way I think about it is quiet is the opposite of loud. The opposite of vocal could be nonverbal. If you need more time to write those down, this would be a great place to pause the video. Next, we're going to look at part C, adding prefixes. So we're going to use our two prefixes, ear and non, to write new words on each line. But make sure that we're writing real words and not nonsense words. So responsible, the opposite of responsible would be irresponsible. Not violent would be nonviolent. Not replaceable would be irreplaceable. Not resistible would be irresistible. Something that is not toxic be called non-toxic. A food that has that does not have fat we would call non-fat. Something that is not human we would call non-human. A story that is not fictional or not fiction we would call nonfiction. Something that is not reversible we would call irreversible. Someone who is not judgmental we would say that they are non judgmental. Something that isn't traditional, we would say, is non-traditional. Something that isn't abrasive, like a sponge, is non-abrasive, meaning it doesn't scratch. Someone who is not a conformist We'd call them a nonconformist. Information that is not refutable, we would call irrefutable. 
Miri write that? I wrote that a little bit unclear. Irrefutable. And something that isn't metal, we would call non-metal. If you need more time to write these down, this would be a great place to pause the video. So now let's take a look at your independent practice. So for your independent practice, you're looking at activity two and activity three. Activity two has three parts. Part A is a crossword puzzle. You do not need to do this. If you want to, because you have extra time or it just looks fun, you can, but you don't need to. Part B, you're determining which word doesn't belong. So for example, number 11, your word is autograph. Which of the four words, write, signature, famous, and message, doesn't belong and doesn't mean something similar to autograph? Or doesn't relate to autograph? In part C, synonyms or antonyms. So you read each pair of words and decide, are they synonyms, are they the same, or are they antonyms, are they opposites? Your next page is activity three. You have part A and part B. Part A, you're filling in the blanks. So you'll read each sentence and decide which word best fits the sentence. In part B, true or false. Read each statement and decide, is it a true statement or is it a false statement? You also have a quiz on Canvas. You're welcome to take this quiz once you're finished with all of your independent work, or you can wait and do it another day. All I ask is that you do not use your word list to complete your quiz. Try to do it from your own smart brain. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'm happy to help as much as I can.